Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Melon's Better Driving Videos. Today's episode we're talking about setups and how understeer and oversteer can affect your lap times and how to set the most ideal lap time, but also the effect that an outright lap time setup will have on your consistency. Now, I started off with this coming lap, which starts right about now, and this lap, it essentially started off very badly. I was just running, essentially, getting into the set of, like, getting into the setup, getting into the track, trying to figure out where my braking points and everything are. I'm not going to say that this is, like, the fastest lap ever, but this is where I started from. This is my starting point, so this is, as you will see, on the sort of understeer setup, it's very understeer prone, it's not like neutral or oversteer prone, it's just sort of your average sort of, let's say a streetcar setup, it's not as track specific as it could be. There's a lot of understeer and um, it really wasn't optimized for the track as much as it could be. So, let's watch the rest of this lap. Um, in the meantime, I want to talk about, if you haven't heard about it yet, the former hosts of Top Gear, um, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May, they are actually creating a social network, if you will, for cars, called Drive Tribe. Now, recently I applied, uh, sometime in the summer, I believe, maybe August, and I was accepted, and so they told me, please have your Drive Tribe, like your content channel, if you will, ready. Have it, have your name, your photos, everything ready. Now, I decided that my Drive Tribe was going to be all about racing, hot hatches, curb hopping, like time attack but mostly just about trying to get the most out of your car, like absolute performance that you possibly can. And <laughs> as you see that I uh, missed my braking point a little bit there because I went into the grass and locked the rear tires up. That's exactly the sort of thing that really the whole channel is going to focus on when I get going with the Drive Tribe. Uh, channel. I'm going to be producing as much content as I possibly can, as well as I can. And so, what you're looking at right now is sort of the beginning of the Drive Tribe channel. Now, I've named it Melon's Curve Hoppers because we're going to be doing curb hopping. Like, that's one of my favorite sensations within racing is curb hopping. As I just now go through that first corner at Monza with curb hopping there. And I think that it's really important that people understand the value of it, uh, among other things, of course. But I've, I'm looking at all these racing channels, and there isn't really a channel that focuses on like grassroots motorsports and really people who get the most out of their car within grassroots motorsports. No. I'm looking at this, and with the neutral setup, you can see I'm probably going to do a lot better because there's understeer with this current setup, but I'm making a lot of errors too. That's because when I have this understeering car, the car doesn't behave how I want it to, of course. Ideally, you want a car that's fairly neutral, and that will be your most consistent because you won't miss your braking point or turn in late or turn in early as frequently and make mistakes. I got a really good run through Ascari chicane there because of all the curb popping and look behind me to see if I can see the ghost and I can't so maybe it's like tied at this point and we're going to come up to the Parabolica it was really bumpy here and it had a lot of understeer so you come through here and you can just hear the front tire screeching as I go through it I could have gained a lot more time there if I had just had a slightly softer suspension setup, and so I remedied that when I went and changed the setup. And that's why 
I didn't run a very fast lap time there. And so, on to the next lap then, and we'll see about if this one turns out any better. Probably doesn't. I think, uh, I think I have to change the setup before I get down into the 153 range. And so, going through to Corregande, and sure enough, I've decided that I wanted to change my setup and get a little bit more oversteer happening, or a little bit more neutral steering. And so, I go on to this hot lap, and this is going to be, I believe, my first lap in the 153 second range. Kind of wasn't perfect through turn one there. Turn two, I still got onto the curb there and got a nice good run onto uh, the Curva Grande straight here. Coming underneath the bridge, going in towards, I guess this is turn three or turn four. What do they call this again? I think Variante. But. I feel like the whole lap has been pretty good, but the setup makes a big change, especially here in Lesmo, where I was able to hug that inside curb really nicely and get on the power early. Coming out of here and go into Lesmo Duo, onto the inside curb really nicely, and it's been a fantastic lap so far because the setup was more neutral. And so you can compare that the fastest lap time I possibly ran with the understeering setup is a 154.663 but the understeering setup I will defend it is a lot more conservative a lot more predictable and a lot more stable so if you were in an endurance race you might run with a slight bit more um, understeer just because it would be so much more consistent and so much more predictable that you'd be able to run clean consistent laps without worrying as much about the car sliding out or doing anything just due to even the slightest mistake. But if you're going to try to qualify for a sprint race, you want a neutral setup as much as you possibly can. And so, oh, I didn't get into the 153 second range, sorry about that, but this lap I think I do get put into that range. I did a much better job in turn 1 there, got onto the power coming out of uh, turn 2 really nicely there, going into Curve Grande with good speed, and hopefully everything will be very, very good through Curve Grande, through um, Variante Chicane up here, through Lesmos, through Ascari, and then around Parabolica. But you can just tell how nicely planted this setup is versus the other one that I started with. There's a lot less understeer, it's a lot more neutral, and the car is just so much more well poised for me that I was able to run much more consistent, much quicker, and it's just better laps because I've gotten used to that setup being slightly more loose, slightly more oversteer prone, if you will. But this is still what I would call the neutral setup. This is the value of having a neutral setup. If you watch this video, this, this replay, this lap right here, is one of the fastest laps that I run. You can just tell it's such a fast lap compared to the other ones. We're down all the way down to the start finish line and we're gonna set a really fast lap here. If you'll notice right now though, the car watch the top speed that it hits. We're gonna hit 252 barely. And then let's see just what it looks like when you're at the full limit. That's this is gonna be replay of the last lap from the front wheel view. So this is what the uh, camera mounted to the side of the car would have seen. 
just the precision that is required if you're going to try to set a fast lap. You, it, you need to have a good setup that's set up just perfectly for you. And this right here, you break down as hard as you can, turn and bounce that curb. That is absolute millimeter perfection precision there. I don't know how I didn't set a fastest lap of anybody yet, but apparently there's a guy whose last name is Stig, which 